All right, guys, we're uh, back out here. We're getting real close to getting this thing started nearly. Rex has made this auxiliary coolant tank. Uh, I think he said it holds like nearly eight liters or something, so that's pretty cool. He's just painting that at the moment. So that actually just sits uh, between the chassis rails underneath the radiator. So it sits in there real nice. It's um, just like an auxiliary extra coolant, um, just for extra cooling capacity, basically, keep this thing cool when we're and, you know. Oh, that was a spoiler. Yeah, we're going to do that one. Ah, okay. I'll bleep that out. That was a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Rex has been hard at it. He's been going nuts. Last weekend, he, you know, he was working till like, he worked till 3.30, went to bed for an hour, got up at 4.30 and then drove to Dolby to go to work. So, he's, um, he's a madman. I'm still recovering from that one. <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. You gotta get it done. That's it. But anyway, so this is coming along. Rad's in. Ah, uh, that's temporary. Oh, it's dummied in. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you can see our little wiring boxes there. She's uh, pretty sick. It just, I don't know, it's weird. Normally, when you build a car, when you get to this stage where everything's got to get wired in and you've got to do coil management and all that sort of stuff, they start to get, I don't know, I suppose they start to look worse. Ugly. They start ugly. to get ugly. Yeah, they start to get busy and ugly, but for some reason, this thing, the further it gets along, it just keeps looking awesome. So, we're pretty excited. Yeah, after we got the motor and pipes in, we realised just how shit it looked with everything all cleaned up and we still left the old insulation on the firewall. So I cracked it the other night and actually ripped it all out. So you can see the dirty parts here that haven't been painted. So now we're gonna to have to mask everything up again, rub it down, and now we're gonna to have to repaint the firewall with the motor in there. So that's gonna be difficult. <laughs> it's gonna take a lot of work, but I think we have to do it now um, given how good the rest of it looks, we can't leave it like that. <laughs> a side effect of building a car over the top, making it way prettier than you ever intended, is that you end up making all the work for yourself due to your own uh, perfectionism. Yeah. What do they call it? What's the OCD? Your own OCD, yeah. So your own OCD comes into play and just creates a whole heap more work for you. So. Yeah, this, this is the tow car. This is the tow car and beach truck. This is not a race car. It's not a show car. It was none of that. And yet here we are. And here we are. It's not a race car, guys. It's not a race car. How many liters did you say it holds, Rex? I'm not telling anyone. We're not telling anyone about it at all. Why not? Because it's our secret. How many liters it holds? The fact that it exists. Why? Because I wanted to keep some tricks up our sleeve. Yeah, okay. All right. So none of this is going in the video then. No. Alright, well I'll just have to put a teaser. I'll have to like just bleep out every time I say what it is and blur it out. <laughs> nah, alright. It's um it holds eight and a half litres. Ah, so we are putting it in here? Fucking well you've already filmed it, haven't you? Not bad boy. Bolts all up in here. and sort things out. Done. There you go. How means that? Hey? Oh yes. That action, look at that cooling action. So much action. Cool the fuck out of it. <laughs> cool as a cucumber. <laughs> Shit! Oh. 
I didn't put the fitting in for the uh, <laughs> for the bleed in the top of the tank. Oh. Oh. And if you're all wondering, hey, did they just discover Zoom? Yes. Yes, we did. Oh man. No one was born knowing everything. So we're uh, just prepping the firewall for paint. Um, So after Rex painted the um, like the inner guards and stuff, he decided that uh, he did leave some um, like insulation on the firewall because it sort of fit around the motor and he thought it would sort of work with it. But after painting the inner guards and everything else, he decided it was all um, like way too untidy. So he ripped all the insulation out. It looks shit. Yeah, it just it didn't look good. So he uh, he ripped all the insulation out and um, he's going to paint the firewall properly so it all sort of ties in. So at the moment we're just prepping everything. Getting everything off, ready to sand and paint the firewall so that it matches the rest of the engine bay. And before anyone says anything, we already know that this has gone way too far. <laughs> Just another thing too, when we do like engine looms and stuff, we always use this M3 Scotch 33 Plus tape. It is like the best tape on the market. You know, I get, I'm lucky to get like 50 views on this video, so you know it's not a paid advertisement. We just really like this tape. Um, we used to be like communications riggers, we used to build mobile phone stuff. This is what we used to use to steal all our connections and it's just, it's like UV resistant. It's, it's expensive, you can buy it from Ideal Electrical. It's like 15 bucks a roll or if you buy 12 rolls, uh, 10 rolls at a time, I think it goes down to about $12 a roll. But it is worth every penny. It is easily the best tape on the market for doing this sort of thing. So, <laughs> Rex has painted uh, the firewall a bit now, so looks pretty schmick. He's also done a bleed. Sorry, I'm just gonna clean the blood off. <laughs> anyway, painted the firewall. Looks a million bucks, looks really nice, pretty happy. <sighs> it's worth the extra effort. Rightio, it's full of fluids. We're about to hit the key. And uh, check the fuel. Oh, well, firstly, we've got to bring the fuel pressure up and check for fuel leaks. But once we've checked that, we're ready to hit the key for the first time. And it's uh, just going to start straight up, isn't it, Rex? <laughs> I'll be amazed if it does. Ah, oh, come on, have some faith. Just so you know as well, Rex has probably put like close to 250, 300 man hours into this thing, somewhere or thereabouts, between two and 300. It has been seven months of uh, blood, sweat and tears. It's just been gruelling, so really, really hoping that it just starts because he's done everything himself from the manufacturing of the uh, manifolds to the wiring, everything. Everything done here in this shed. So let's hope. We had, um, oh, we had the ECU sent to Shane Radaish at SC Performance. And he just put a basically a pretty close to map in the ECU so we could get it fired up and going. Um, Rex has also ordered HP tuners, which should be here soon, so that we can do an actual road test. And um, basically just a bit of a road tune so that we can get it pretty close. And then we'll be taking it back down the coast to Shane for Shane to do the final touch up and the proper tune on it. So yeah, so getting there. But anyway, that's how we're able to start it, just in case probably something we forgot to mention. Right, so we've run into a bit of a problem. We've got a bit of a fuel leak. So anyway, big thanks to Shane for that. He's a bloody wizard, so. Alrighty, so it seems to be some sort of starter issue. It's either it's like arcing out and the uh, ECU's killing the starter or something like that. So 
We're just gonna try again and just um, hit, like, leave the key on and just short out the starter and see if we can get it to fire. Alright, so it starts and runs, so the wiring can't be too bad, but obviously there's something to do with the starter, just um, the SU is killing the starter, there's just a bit of teething issues we've got to sort out there. Uh, plus, obviously, the bass tune that Shane's put in it was obviously not perfect because he's not there to see it. And um, it's just sort of dumping fuel, and that's why there's so much smoke. But starts and runs, which is great. Alright, so we played around with it a bit and sort of got to the bottom of the starting issue. Um, the way LS is a wired, the starting relay actually earths to the ECU and we're pretty sure that is done to retard the timing while it's cranking. Um, but obviously it's not earthing well enough and when we put a, just a body earth straight from the relay to the body, uh, it seems to start and actually engages the starter and goes fine. So that's what we're going to do now. If there are any LS gurus out there that reckon that there might be an issue with that, please let us know. As far as we are concerned, we think that should be fine. So, see how we go I suppose. So aside from that, there's still just a couple of little oil leaks and fuel leaks and just little teething issues we've got to sort out. Oh, that's hot. It's hot? Oh, it's hot. Seven months of hard work is coming to a point where it's all, I suppose, worth it. Which is nice. It's not. It's nice. We're glad it started, basically. We would have been angry if it didn't start. There would have been plenty of swearing. Considering that once we got that starter sort of thing sorted, all we did was short that starter out and pretty much fired up straight away. But, um, it's just dumping way too much fuel, but that's all right. The tune that was in it was only to be close just to get it started. HP tuners should be arriving, arriving tomorrow, so this afternoon I'll finish wiring up the OBD plug and the rest of the stuff inside. And tomorrow we should be able to actually get a start on tuning it and have a play around with it. Get it cracking. Cracking.